Amen. Truly, it is a blessing to be here today. We thank the Lord for his spirit today, for allowing us to come together. You may be seated in the sight of the Lord. Giving him all the praise and glory this morning, all the testimony, the songs that was sung, even though I thought we was on the third one, but <laughs> on the second one, we praise God. I think we can have a little sense of humor, right? Right. Amen. Father God, we just thank you on this glorious day. Thank you for the bright sunshine you have allowed us to live to see. That, we, Lord, we can come together and say, praise be to our God. Father, you sit high, you look low. We thank you for your holiness and your righteousness today, O oh God. And Father, we just pray now for the families that was affected, Lord, by the assassination yes. that took place, O oh God. We ask that you comfort them during their pain. Yes. Lord, remember those who are going through sickness within our congregation today. Father, your word says you are the one who heal all our diseases. And we lift them up before you today. Father, we lift your word up today as it goes forth. Lord, that it accomplish what it set out to accomplish. We give you the praise. Touch my lips of clay. Hide me behind the cross. And glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For a while today, I want to speak with you from the book of Romans, chapter number 12. Romans, chapter number 12. And our text today coming from Romans 12, 11 and 12. Amen. 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 All right, I'll start reading in verse 11. Not slowfulness in business, firm in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Amen. I'm going to stop reading right there and just talk with you today about the Christian's duty to himself. The Christian duty to himself. Amen. Oftentimes, we think that we are doing the Lord a favor when we show up to church or Amen. attend and to our prayers and we think we are doing the Lord a favor. No, but that's actually to benefit us. It is to grow us. It is to keep us encouraged. And on the other hand, while we think of others, we are also to think of ourselves. Amen. We know that we have care for others. But you wouldn't put others before yourself when you're taking care of yourself. So we also, we should put ourselves in the mix also. There was a writer by the name of Herbert Spencer. He had a contrast allegiance of empathy and or the religion of hesodism with what he called the legion of amity or the region of Christianity. But he speaks as if the Christian precept was thou shalt love thy neighbor better than thyself. No, that's further from what the scripture says. The scripture says, the commandment, Jesus said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. 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 I'm sure that you wouldn't say, oh, I'm going to get a sleeping bag and sleep outside and give up your bed for your neighbor. No. <laughs> we invite him in to be part of it rather than the other way. And to thy truth, be truthful to thyself. And it must follow this pattern as day follow night. Thou canst not say then to be any to a false man, 
The apostle elaborates on some duties which the Christian must owe himself. Amen. Well, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, today's topic, the Christian duty to himself. Well, the Apostle Paul begins and picks it up. He says, be diligent in business. Amen. You don't want to do business as a Christian and you are not diligent in doing it right. Each man should have some definitely work or business in life. There should be something in your life that you are doing, and you should be diligent in it, especially when it comes down to Christian to be free from sin and idleness. Amen. We don't want to be sinful. I mean, even though we are shaped in sin, we don't want to become idle. That means we have no activity at all. But we want to be in the work of the God, always abiding in his work. Amen. Whatever our work is, let us do it to the ability that God has given us to perform it. Amen. Whether it be ursuring, whether it be praise team leader, mm -hmm. or pastoring, or, or whatever God has called you, or evangelizing. Let us do it to the ability that God gives us. Amen. The hands of diligent makes rich. Seeing that a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before men. In other words, God honor those who do business diligently, who honors their word. Amen? Amen. And another thing the apostle want to bring out is doing this here, having the spirit of serving. Ferment in spirit. Ferment in the spirit. It is a strong face. Ferment means burning. Amen. I can remember a few weeks ago, a pastor preached a message about burning. You know, the spirit moving, doing it with enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Hey Amen. We don't want to just drag, drag, drag. <laughs> that is, uh, I mean, God is not a God who drags, drag, drag. Right. <laughs> Amen. And we should honor him by dragging. We should show some excitement. Right. I mean, when we think about when we say the phrase, this is a day that the Lord has made, mm -hmm. that's something because you know what you're saying? God, you allowed me to open my eyes and behold a day that you have given me another chance and another opportunity to praise your name. Amen. 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 When I, I you see me getting excited, I mean, I'm excited when I think about the goodness of God. Amen. And when I think about what could have been, I'm grateful today to stand here and expound on his word and to share with you the goodness of God. Amen. Why, well, Mr. Preacher, why are you so grateful today? Because it is my Christian duty to myself. Amen. Amen. If, if I'm dragging and I don't show any excitement, then everybody around me, I'm going to pull them down also. That's right. Amen. I told you about the guy I worked with, how he was so negative. You know, and I told him, I said, you know what, if you don't like it, go talk to the management. I said, I, frankly, I'm tired of hearing <laughs> I can't do nothing about the situation, but management can change your situation. So to go up to the office and tell them, don't keep talking to me back here. It's cold, and I really don't want to hear it. <laughs> Amen. So we must be grateful. Amen. Amen. When I think about it, and I was sharing with my wife when I got home yesterday, and I said, you know, that could have been my story. Mm -hmm. That could have been. Could have been. That's right. And I'm grateful today. Great. That mm -hmm. Being able to see a new day yes. that the Lord has given me. And when I think about it, and I drive down the street and I see these people out here under the big bridge, it could have been me. Yes. But I thank God it's not me. Amen. Amen. 
And when I think about it, I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. I thank God for this day he has given me. I thank him for his spirit that he has given in me and breathed into my nostrils to come out and share on another day that the Lord has made. Yes. Glory to his name. Be firm in your spirit. That is a strong face. Uh, face. Firm in spirit means burning and on fire. Yes, we need more Christians to be on fire yes. for the Lord. Amen. Some reason or another, we have allowed ourselves for our fire to kind of simmer down. And it's not burning like it should be. Jesus says we should be a light up on a hill that where our light shine, men shall see the good work of our Heavenly Father and praise Him which are in heaven. So we need to turn our fire up and get, and get a little bit more excited. And so there are unusual called fanatics. Sometimes when people act and see you jumping around and clapping your hand and stomping your feet, they want to call you a, for a religious fanatic. Amen. Go ahead on it. Say whatever you're going to say. I'm praising my God because when I look back over my life yes, yes. and I see just how far he has brought me from. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. He has brought me from a mighty long ways. And I'm sure some of you have been here a whole lot longer than I have. But I thank him for the 66 years that he has given me. And I thank him for those that he's going to give me, if it's his divine will. So we find here that uh, Festus was a, a, a Roman governor that had cast Paul in the prison. But anyway, Festus called Paul a fanatic. You know, when Paul was killing Christians, they called him a murderer. He was a fanatic when he was killing Christians. But when Paul was converted by Christ, he became a fanatic for the word of God. Matter of fact, he wrote most of the New Testament. But Paul, Festus was known to call Paul a fanatic because by casting him in prison, Paul continued to walk with the Lord. Paul didn't give up on his tribulation or his trial. He began and continued to serve the Lord. There are other great men who have started out and wrote great books. Some of them have conquered, some of them have fell off. But the Apostle Paul's word still stands today because it's part of the word of God. Amen. We must have a spirit a servant, a spirit of servant. The spirit concentrates life. It makes it sweeter that we can walk in, into a saved life. Serving the Lord does not mean or lead us to a drunkard, disgrading life. It should allow us to be honest in the spirit, firm in our business dealing, we are not to be called those who disgrace the Lord, but we should be honoring him. Amen. Amen. And that's what St. Paul did in Acts 27 and 23. Paul said, even though I'm in prison, I am who I am. I am who I serve. Can we say that today? I am who I am. I am who I serve. Thanks the Lord today that we're serving Thank you. a living God. Amen. He's a risen king today. Amen. And we honor him on this day. We should also go on and be hopeful and joyful. Amen. Rejoicing always in hope. Why rejoicing always in hope? Well, one simple reason is I talked about the day that the Lord has made. When we think about all the evilness that's going on in our world today. Amen. If you turn the news on, within five minutes you're depressed. <laughs> because there's nothing good. Yes, yes. Everything you hear is negative. 
evil lurks all around us. You know, thank God for the spirit of protection over us. Amen. Amen. As driving to the church today, you just don't know how much danger lurked around you. Amen. As you was driving your car down the freeway, there could have been somebody shooting, not at you, but shooting at someone else. I mean, just this week alone, there's been, what, several shootings on the freeways, accidents. You just name it. Our world is being torn apart today. Now, our government is fighting over Wade versus Roe or uh, abortion rights and all these things are going on in our time today. But Jesus said, don't be torn down in your spirit, but keep your hope and rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. God knows what's going on. Yes, he does. Don't think that he don't know. God knows what's going on. And so the apostle and otherwise in this epistle used the phrase, rejoice in hope and the glory of God. That's what we are doing today. We are rejoicing in hope and the glory of God who have given us another opportunity yes. to come into a fellowship. And also there was a writer by the name of Dr. Chambers he had somewhat to say. He says, that which is distinguished of wisdom from frolic is the power and the habit of anticipation. Are you anticipating something to happen to you good today? Are you anticipating the Lord to perform a miracle in your life today? Yes. Or are you living in anticipation? Certainly, we know the Lord can do all things except fail. He has endured the cross. Hebrews 12 and 2 reminds us. I talked about Paul in his writing of the New Testament. So it was with Paul when he looked. And he looked forward. He was looking ahead. Why must the Christians always Look in the rearview mirror, <laughs> thinking about the past. You know, we often do that. Look back, think about how tough times were when we was growing up. There's nothing wrong with that, but the Bible encourages us to look forward. The Apostle Paul looked forward to his crown of righteousness. He made a statement, he says, when he has finished his course, when he had done all that he can do that God had for him to do, Amen. I'm ready to be offered up. That God had a crown of righteousness stored up for the apostle. Therefore, the Christian today should be full of joy. But are we joyful? Are we really? Why is it so many Christians walking around with their head down <laughs> to the ground? Last time I read the scriptures, it says, look up. Stay in prayer and in thanksgiving because our redemption draws near. We're looking for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. He's not coming from down there. He's coming from up there. <laughs> and I want to see him. I want to meet him when that time comes. Be full of joy. Share with others the joy and what God is doing in your life. It's not always about how much money you got, how big a house the Lord has blessed you with, but to share hope with others that have no joy in their life. Even in the dark times and the days we are living in, I'm still hopeful that I can carry this joy and let the others who do not have no hope see my light. Amen. And praise our Heavenly Father, which art in heaven. 
Why should we groan on a life's heavy burdens? Mm. Why should we? When we think of the rest that Jesus has promised his people. Why? It's a big question. Why do we allow, why do we allow um, God's, I mean, not God's, but why do we, why do we allow that heavy, that burden of heaviness to weigh us down? Oftentimes, even in our present state, in our physical state, that we have become so used to being heavy laden and burdened down till we don't allow the word of God to take full root in our lives. Amen. Because if you're going to try to get it from anywhere else, it's not, it's not going to work. When we think of the rest that he has promised us, we should be praising God. Why should we be indulgently distressed by the trials of life when we remember that trials only come to make us stronger? Amen. If you didn't have any tests in life, mm. how do you know that what your God can do? Amen. Amen. If every day was all roses and there was no days of sorrows, how would you know that your God can deliver you? This too is a duty of the Christian that he owes himself. He owes himself the duty to study God's word and when those dark days come, there is comfort in the word of God. Work becomes no longer a burden. Amen. When we have to go to our job. Amen. It should come with a joy of going in, doing what you are called to do. Amen. And Paul picks it up again in the scriptures. He says, in patience under trouble, patience in tribulation, true Christians will know how to suffer. Amen. Jesus said, those who follow him must pick up their cross and follow him daily. That cross meant that there is going to be some dark days. There are going to be some sufferings. Mm -hmm. Amen. If we think about it and go back and look at what Jesus went through for us, it could have been us, but God loved us so much that he sent forth the true, the one and only sacrificial lamb. There's no more sacrifice in bulls and goats. There's no more burning incense on the altar. Jesus has taken care of all of that. Amen. And he sent for his only begotten son. God knows what we are going through and the meaning that he's taken us from trouble to glory. And we praise him today. Also, he wants us to be persistent in prayer. I often talk about the young man from Atlanta. 629, when the line opens, he's on there. Five days a week. I mean, that's consistent. Mm -hmm. Are we consistent in our prayer? Continuing, instant in prayer. Prayer is the beginning and the end of a Christian's life. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We should never, ever, we shouldn't ever, ever give up on prayer. Right. Amen. Amen. That is our Christian duty to pray. Humbling ourselves and seeking the Lord. Amen. You might not pray at 630 in the morning, but you're praying sometime during the course of the day. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible asks us to watch as well as pray. That our flight don't be caught off God. Watch as well as pray. And the Apostle Paul picks it up over in Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. He says, and when you have done all you can do, 
This is what I recommend for you to do. Having exalted his readers to put on, put on the whole armor of God. Amen. What do you mean, bro, preacher, by putting on the whole armor of God? Put the word of God in your heart. Amen. And he says, and gird your lungs with truth. And put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on your sanders of the gospel of peace. And the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. The apostle Paul in his writings in Ephesians. And the sword of the spirit. And he also goes on to add, praying always and in all supplication in the spirit. Sometimes you just got to pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pray in the spirit. God knows what you're saying. So pray in the spirit. Amen. This is fitting. This is the climax. This is the whole duty of the Christian. And we're doing this not for no show form or fashion. Amen. I don't come out here and sing and preach for man's glorification. Amen. Amen. I'm doing it because it makes me feel good on the inside. Amen. Amen. That I'm feeding the spirit of God on the inside of me. No, I'm not in tune to what you're wearing. That's not, that's not why I'm here. I come out here to praise our Heavenly Father. Amen. Because God's been good unto us. Amen. Amen. And that's why I do what I do. Because it makes my spirit, spirit feel good on the inside. Amen. You might not even like what I'm wearing today, but that's all right. <laughs> you might not even like how I look. That's okay. <laughs> but long as I'm doing what God has called me out to do, Amen. I'm feeding myself spirit and sharing with you. The apostle goes on and says, and this is a fitting climax for the whole body of Christ. It is the exception the Lord, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Amen. Amen. God's church, he's building it today. You look around, you might not see many of, of us in this place, but all around the world, God is building his church. Amen. Amen. John the Revelator says, He's seen a multitude of people standing before the throne of God out of every creed, color, standing before the throne of God. Don't just think it's going to be us. There's going to be a whole lot of people before the, in, the, in the kingdom of God. Don't even look like you. But this is God in his doing. But that's why we are exalting you today. Feed yourself as you share with other, because it is the Christian duty. And in my closing today, however, it is just as the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is not to be quenched. We are not to quench feeding ourselves so that we can share with others. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19 reminds us our zeal should not be quenched. We should be built up. We should have the cares and the concerns of life and also the opposite of our enemy that we can get to us the undermining of our zeal. Zeal means our enthusiasm. The enemy want to come in and he want to tell you, Okay, I want to quench your spirit. No, you're not going to quench my spirit, devil. Amen. God has brought me from a long ways, and I'm thanking him today for it. That's why Paul felt the need to encourage the church. Whatever you're doing, do for yourself as you share with others. 
so that they don't see the dark side of the Christian in business dealings, in hope, in patience. Have you heard those say, I'm going to stay on the battlefield mm -hmm. for my Lord all the days of my life, serving the Lord? And the zeal we have been given, it is meant to help us serve the Lord. Since the Lord is Lord over every area of our life, we can expect the zeal of the Spirit to help us in every area of our life. We can expect to be zealous when we see our friends. We can expect to be zealous to the mothers, to the fathers, the ed educators, the business people, and above all, we can expect to be zealous in our roles and whatever God have called you to do. Today, let us fire up our zeal for the Lord. Let us do things as though that is our last minute, Amen. our last day. Whatever God called you to do, just do it to your ability that God has given them to you. Don't try to sing like a professional singer if God hasn't given you the gift. Do what you can do. Amen. Amen. If you can't play the organ like the professional pianos, play the ability that God has given you. Amen. In other words, to make this short, do what you can do with the ability that God has given you. Amen. Don't, don't, don't make yourself a role model after somebody else. Now, there are some people who can get up here and preach the horns off of Billy Goat, the old timers can say. But do what God has given you the ability to do. And that was the whole message of the day. Feed yourself so that you can share and feed others with hope. If you're not nourishing yourself, pretty soon your body is going to break down and you're not going to be able to share with anybody. So whatever God has given us, share it with others. Amen? Amen. And that's my word for today. Amen. Amen.